Welcome to lesson one of the slide guitar course. In this first lesson, we'll be learning some of the very basic things that are essential for you to know in order to play some very cool blues guitar with a slide. First thing we need to know is the slide itself. What type should you use? How big should it be? Etc. Let's take a look. Now, here are some examples of slides that you may want to consider using. These are two brass slides here, and the silver one is a metal slide. Now, I have a personal preference for a brass slide, in particularly a thick brass slide, because of the quality of tone it produces. Now, you may find, though, that a thicker slide is a lot heavier when you place it on your little finger. If you have a glass slide, which it's possible because they do sell glass slides, you may find that that's a little lighter on your finger, but unfortunately you won't get quite the tonal production that you get from the metal or the brass slide. Also, the glass slide tends to sound a little bit scratchy over the strings. So if you have a metal slide, like the silver one, that's fine. You may want to start out with one that's a little bit thinner. If you look here, you can see that the actual brass slide itself is a little thicker than the metal slide here. But if you start out with a thin metal slide, it may be a little easier to control since it's on your little finger than the brass one, but you can move up to the brass one. Now, the next important thing is to get a slide that fits over your little finger so that the end of your little finger protrudes out of the top of the slide. You don't want it to be covered like this. You want to be able to see the little finger, and that's important because having a slide over that finger when you're moving along the strings, it's very important that you can sense where some of the strings are, and that really helps if your little finger is protruding or sticking out through the top of the slide here like this. All right, I think now we can start looking at the types of tuning that we're going to be using for these lessons. Now, there are different types of tunings that you can use for playing slide guitar. There's an E tuning where you tune the actual strings to an E major chord. There's a G tuning, which I have a preference for and what I'm about to teach you how to tune up to. And there's a regular E tuning. There's also an A tuning. In fact, there's quite a few of them, really. But the basic ones that are dealt with in slide guitar are usually E, uh, D. You can do A major and G major. And of course, just keeping the guitar tuned the way it normally is. Now, we're going to learn a G tuning. That is, we're going to alter the strings from a regular tuning of the guitar so that when we hit all the open strings, we will hear the sound of a G chord ringing. Let me show you how to do that now. Now, of course, it's easier to tune if you have an electronic tuner because you can figure out quite easily how to move the strings. If you don't have an electronic tuner, here's a quick, simple way of learning to tune to a G chord. If you recall from regular tuning, when you get the first string in tune with the second, you place your finger on the fifth fret here and you create two E's. Well, in this case, you're going to place your finger, middle or third finger, it doesn't matter, on the third fret of the second string and you play that note, that's a D, and then you play the open first string and you want to drop that first string down so it rings as a D. In other words, it synchronizes sound-wise with the second string. So here we go. Dropping it down, I'm checking it again, still quite not there, it's getting there, it's quite near. Now you have to remember too, when you bring a string right down in pitch, it has a tendency to climb back up again because the string has been used to being very tense. So it's sometimes a good idea to drop below the note, try it again, and then climb up to it. like that. There we have it. So those two notes are ringing in unison together now. They sound the same, in other words. A bit of an adjustment. Fine tune it. Almost done. There. So our first string is a D. Our second string is an open B. 
Our third string stays the same as well as the second. That's a G. So the second, third, and fourth string will remain the same. So we have B on the second, G on the third, D on the fourth. Now the fifth string needs to go from A, needs to drop down in pitch to G. And the best way I find of doing this is to play the open fifth string first, then play the open third, which is a G, and gradually drop the fifth string down in pitch. And you can almost hear them ringing in unison together. Now, of course, that G is an octave lower than the third string, but it's still quite easy to move the tuning peg play the two together until they resonate at the same frequency. There. And you can do the same thing with the sixth string. This needs to go down to a D. And you can drop that down by playing the sixth string, open, and the open fourth string. Again, they're an octave apart. And it's a good idea, once again, to drop a little lower and then climb up to it. Just check the fifth string again. Perfect. So now, if you listen, there is a G chord when I strum the chord. One more time, you've got a first string wants to drop to a D. The second stays the same as a B. The third stays the same as a G. The fourth stays the same as a D. The fifth is lowered to a G. And the sixth is lowered to a D. And there you have it. And that's the tuning we're going to be using for learning slide.